It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hey, Ernie Johnson here, and I'm joined by Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. Tonight, we'll be watching the Orlando Magic playing against the Houston Rockets. Well, it was Houston in their last game with a loss to the Lakers in Los Angeles. That game was a shootout. Defense will be the key tonight for them to bounce back with a win. And tonight, get ready for some highlights. Two lightning-quick, high-flying clubs. Kenny, when you have teams as athletic as these, how can one side carve out an advantage? Poise. Mm. That's it. You want to be athletic, but you also want to be level-headed. You got to have a combination of the two. You got to execute your plays, and you just don't rely on your physical gifts because that could be detrimental. And not only that, A M B F A E. What's that? Avoid mistakes. Be fast and efficient. Wow. <laughs> F M B. Where do you come F -A -E? up with that? A E. A M B F A E. Okay. Avoid mistakes. Okay. Be fast and efficient. God, man, that's quick and fast. Yeah, and hurt. It's going to be an exciting matchup. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. You're the first person who's ever said that. A M B F A E. Oh, say does that star spangle banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Live from Orlando, 2K Sports proudly brings you the Magic at Amway Center. I'm Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. From the sideline, our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Looking at the last game for the Orlando Magic, it was a win against the Nets in Brooklyn. And that was a close call. They pulled it out with a win and just two points at that. But it wasn't easy. And how about the defensive adjustments in that one? Their communication was brilliant all night. Yeah, I agree. And communication is effort, and effort is communication. Very talkative out there, yelling out screens, giving each other help. Boy, that was a terrific all-around effort. And we've got time for a quick pregame report. With that being said, let's head to the sideline in our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge, D.A. Well, guys, James Harden is a great offensive player, but there's no mistaking it. He does dominate the ball. Now, that can bother teammates sometimes, but Coach Mike D'Antoni says... When they feel that paycheck every two weeks, that should make them play hard. You have to be a star in your role. So when James gets the ball to you, shoot it, and then run back and play hard as heck. Kevin? Thanks. He's a great passer, David. There's no doubt he can set the table. And during this part of the season, a lot of lengthy road trips can be found for teams in the league. Clark, I would assume it's maybe sometimes hard to play at your best when you've been on the road for a long time. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, there's a galvanizing aspect to being on the road because it's just you and your teammates against the opponent. But when you're out on the road for a long time, things can get a little stale. You can become a little distracted. So it becomes very difficult, particularly for young teams, to work through the grind and adversity of being on the road. Veteran guys are used to it, but the young fellows often struggle with that. Here's the starting group for Houston. The two pillars of this team, Chris Paul and Harden, are the one and the two. Ariza and Anderson holding down the forward spots. And it's Capella in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. And so the Houston Rockets get the first points of the ball game. 11 feet away, and it comes off the front of the rim. On defense, Orlando. It's a three-point game, and the call will be against Fournier. That is his first foul of the game. Yeah, quick foul to pick up right away here in the first quarter. Ball outside and stolen by Gordon. Fournier against Harden. And Fournier kicks to Mack. First shot, first basket. He's out of the blocks fast. 
Boy, that's impressive. I mean, not often do you see shots like this find the net. Fortunately, the basket got in the way. Paul kicks to Harden. Screen by Capella. And Anderson has it in the corner. And again, it's the Rockets from deep. Not a whole lot a defense can do. You know, Anderson is amazing at knocking down contested shots. First 130 gone here in the first quarter. Here's Vucevic. Another shot. He lays it in. Boy, the hustle by Vucevic. I mean, showing real commitment and investment on the glass and finding ways to come up with second chance opportunities for his team. That's um, very impressive. Now here's Harden. He had a 27 point outing in their last game against the Lakers. And a sturdy screen set for him that time. And he doesn't fool around just straight to the rim for the finish. No way for his man to get around that one. That's that's for sure. No chance, Kevin. I mean, the screen was in the right spot. His feet were set. He would have had to go straight through him. And that's not legal. Gordon a screen. Here's Vucevic. Another shot. And Capella sends it back. And every season, Capella has improved as a shot blocker. Timing, awareness, recognition. He's really good at erasing shot attempts. Ross, that's good. Yeah, what a nice play. Just a coaster coaster by himself off of that steal. And that replay presented by Under Armour showing us the fantastic steal that led to that fast break finish. Another Unleash Chaos moment. And here in the first, approaching three minutes played. Paul outside. There's the pass to Harden. Capella with a screen on Ross. Reza dishes to Paul. Just four to shoot. Back to Ariza. Launches a three. Comes out of the gate empty. He's 0 for 1. That's the first miss for this offense. They hit three or four to start. Ross, that's good. Really impressive seeing a guy like Vucevic carve up the defense with his peripheral vision and passing. So good at spotting the open man. Now here's Paul. He had 15 points last out. Ariza outside. Capella against Vucevic. Kicks it out to Harden. Shoots over Fournier. The Rockets with another miss. The Magic have gone 50% from the field to this point. Four of eight. Gordon with the screen for Fournier. And no good. Had a chance to take the lead. Houston's gone two or three from deep so far in this game. Ariza goes in. Harden the pass to Capella. Houston moving the ball around. And Paul gets it to go in. A hand in his face. In P for CP3. No problem. Takes more than that to affect his jump shot. Fournier against Harden. Vucevic a screen on Ariza. Ross with a wide open look. It's rebounded by Houston. They couldn't put the pieces together, losing the last matchup with the Lakers. And that was a shocker. Hard to believe that they dropped the ball, so to speak, on that one. And probably a tough pill for them to swallow. And to lose it like they did, too. Wow. Right at the end, man, makes it even tougher to take. Well, you take a look at this Houston Rockets offense. They've got so many threats. And Harden is clearly the big one. He's in the middle of it all. And his teammates do a nice job of playing off of him. Now here's Ross. He had 13 points in the win against the Nets in Brooklyn. Great appreciation for Ross. Never afraid of going into the contact on the way up. Well done. And what do you guys think so far about the offensive approach for the Rockets? Guys, they are dialed in from beyond right now. They didn't waste any time getting into a groove in this game. They've been distributing the ball really well tonight, too. I mean, a decent number of assists so far for them. That free throw good from Ross. 
Greg, it's been a long rebuild for the Magic, but they really feel they've got a plan in place. Well, you heard the front office talking that they're going to win at least one championship by the year 2030. And I got to say, that's an interesting quote, to, to say the least. I mean, I have heard of a five-year plan, but a 13-year plan? I guess you'd call that building for the long term. And when you look at this Magic team with their talent, what should their identity be? Well, I think it should be up-tempo, defensive-oriented. They've got really good athletes, and defending at a high level with that kind of athleticism is doable and I think would lead to easier offense. And that's what I think they have to foundation themselves on. Like that execution, Kevin, a successful possession leading to a high percentage basket. And Matt kicks to Fournier. And taken away by Paul. Harden outside. Here's Anderson. And Anderson slams it in. Outstanding presence of mind. Harden is constantly looking for the open shooter. And Matt kicks to Vucevic. Shoots over Capella. No good off the back of the rim. Boy, he's having a tough time right now. Seems like he's forcing his shot a bit to me, Kevin, not letting it come in the flow of the game. Outstanding entry pass there. He knew exactly where to go with the ball. Here's Paul following the score by Aaron Gordon. Harden kicks to Capella. Pass to Anderson. Over Gordon. Anderson can't get it to go. The Magic trail by five. Fournier dishes to Mack. Trills the three-pointer. Mack's got five. He can be a forgotten man in their offense sometimes, but the D still has to keep an eye on him. Screen by Capella. Paul kicks to Harden. Ariza outside. Down low. It's stolen by Vucevic. Fournier against Harden. Pass to Vucevic. He dishes it to Matt. Passes to Gordon. Over Anderson. And it's wide right. It's off the rim. Not pretty. You've just got to shake off a miss like that. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. And when you watch this Rockets team, you can see just how explosive they are on the offensive end. Almost everyone on the floor can hurt you from deep, and they all know their role and execute it to a T. Gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. First one falls for him. And last season, the Rockets' offense was incredible. Then they go and add Chris Paul. They can run a team off the floor if they get hot. Two great playmakers in Paul and Harden. And making a move for Paul made a lot of teams fear what the Rockets can do now on offense. So a new group on the floor for Orlando. And so Paul nails both of them. And at the line, it's all about consistency with him. His routine, his stroke, it never wavers. And Augustine kicks to Spates. Orlando moving the ball around. Augustine against Paul. Back to Augustine. Shot clock at six. No good from Simmons. Rockets leading by four. Johnson outside. Paul goes in, kicks it to Johnson. Good on the three-point shot. Oh, a good open look, and he sprays it home from three. Orlando's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Spade sets a screen for Augustine to the paint. Nene against Spade. Some solid defense there by Nene. Rockets have gone 8 of 11 in the first quarter. They'll take that percentage any night. Johnson, the pass to Gordon, feeds it to Emba Amute. Gordon against the Flalo. Nene. Orlando 
Rubio grabs the miss. And this is the first season matchup for them against this Rockets team. Yeah, interconference matchup. Two, two teams that'll see each other only twice on the schedule. Yeah, and Greg, this is a big game for both teams. I mean, they don't see each other often, and you know they both want to get a win in this one. That one goes in. And their offense already in a flow. Some stellar shooting to jump out to this lead. Quality looks they're getting, and they're capitalizing on them, guys. They have to be happy with this start offensively. And here's Simmons for three. And the rebound goes to Nene. Houston leading by nine. Johnson kicks to Nene. Screen by Baamute. Back to Gordon. And stolen by Simmons. Buries the jumper to finish the break. Simmons got his first points of the game. Here's Paul. Five points in the game. Nene, the screen. The feed to Gordon. And stolen by a follow. Here's Isaac. That shot is off. Good work defensively by Johnson. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. They came focused and ready to play. I mean, they're doing everything they can to uh, put things in their favor. You earn that, and they're actually earning it well right now. Houston making a switch here. Green's checked in. Here's Isaac. Nine-point game is last outing. Nene outside. He kicks it to Johnson. Gordon for three. That's in there. Johnson with the assist. Gordon's got himself on the board with three there. And good passing. Setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Time dropping delights is what I call it. I, that is a nice pass. I will give you that one. Yeah, he's on the money, that's no doubt. Now here's a follow. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Shot clock at five. The shot buries the jump shot. One fourteen left here in the opening quarter. Nene with the screen on Simmons. Outside Green. He feeds it to Emba Amute. Johnson dishes to Gordon. That doesn't go either for Gordon. And it's Eric Gordon with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. The Magic trail by eight. Spates sets a screen. And a follow kicks to Spates. Let's the three fly. And you can see they're struggling from the field. But still early. I mean, they've just got to trust their offense and work to get stops. That's the kind of D you need when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were all over. And count it. The shot is good. He'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, nice vision from the little fellow there, Augustine, making it easy for his teammates by finding the open man. For Orlando, they have been perfect at the line so far, albeit just two for two. And team free throw numbers really about as good as you could ask for, around 80% on the season. And that's a little better than they did last year from the free throw line. The Rockets making a switch here. Harden's checked in. And, and since Dwight Howard back in 2012, the rebuild effort just has languished here in Orlando, unable really to draft any superstar talent. And last season, trades for veteran talent didn't really move the needle either. Now, here is Harden. Seven points in the game. The defense did not do a good job guarding that one, Kevin. Don't know how he missed that layup. And here's a follow. Spates sets a screen. Another miss by Orlando. And that concludes the first quarter of play. The Rockets on top. They're up by five. And we'll be back with you for the start of the second quarter when we return.
And earlier, Chris Paul told us about the depth of their roster. So important for any team. Our bench is amazing. It's so exciting because when our bench comes in, uh, more often than not, if we're losing, they're going to get us the lead. And if we have the lead, they're going to increase the lead. And it's, it's fun to watch because everybody cheers for each other, too. When your starters feel that good about their second unit, guys, that's a heck of a asset that a team can have. And if you've seen Chris Paul cheering from the bench, you know that it's very, very true. And, Kevin, that's the kind of team that, that's always been so much fun to play on. Everybody's really pulling for one another, no matter who's playing. E even in practice, uh, with that kind of a team, you, you tend to have more fun. All right, the second quarter beginning in just a moment. And looking at what we've seen from Houston, what do you guys think? I think they play great D and, and not giving up anything easy early on. Exactly. I mean, they've made their presence felt on this end. Excellent job contesting shots so far. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor. All fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. So on the floor for Houston. Harden out there with Green. Then there's Nene. Then it's Mbamute, and it's Johnson in at the small four. No good from Spates. And there was no effort on behalf of the defense, none. I mean, the shooter has to be upset with himself for missing that shot. Here's Harden, and the jam by Harden. And I think one of the things understated about Harden, he's a great athlete. I mean, he can rise and bounce. He's strong. He's quick. He can easily punch it on you when he gets to the rim. Here's Augustine following the score by Houston from past the arc and the rebound goes to Nene Nene's got four rebounds now tonight Green the pass to Mbamuta good and it's Green picking up the assist and now it's a 12 point Houston lead not too much respect shown to him by the defenders pass to Isaac to the middle here's Spates and the slam dunk by Spates Really easy to appreciate Isaac, Kevin. I mean, a solid teammate who's always ready to share the sugar. Houston leading by 10. Harden dishes to Johnson. Back to Harden. Down to five on the shot clock. A shot off that time. So Orlando will take it the other way. Here's a follow. Bank shot. No good. He's got to be disappointed with himself on that one. He has got to knock those down. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. And there's a whistle. That's going to go on James Harden. That's his first foul. And the Magic Harden. making a change here. Gordon's checked in. Houston also making some changes. Clint Capella, he's checked in for Nene. Anderson comes in for Mbaamute. And Trevor Ariza subbed in for Johnson. And clearly, Frank Vogel wants to talk it over. And we know just how important a player who can catch and shoot is to an offense. Clark, which players in the league are the best, in your opinion, in that regard? I think you've got to start with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, two of the very best, if not the best, shot makers we've ever seen in the league. The way they can catch and shoot it from deep, challenged, open shots off the dribble off the catch their shot making ability is absolutely remarkable jj reddick is a guy that can make shots as well but those two guys i think are in the class by themselves now about three minutes gone in his second quarter of basketball and mac kicks to fournier orlando moving the ball around Vicious to Ross. Down low. And then Gordon with the dunk. Ross has earned his reputation as a team first guy. Excellent at distributing the ball. Fournier against Green. Harden outside. Anderson the screen. Reza passes to Green. And another three for Houston. And really, the defense didn't do a lot to fight around that screen on that possession. Picked by Vucevic. Vucevic a screen on Hart. Here's Mack. Here's Vucevic. And terrific work on the offensive glass when he picks up two. Vucevic has got his second bucket of the game to go. 
outside green screen by Capella Harden dishes to Ariza and the pass to green off the mark there with the three-point shot and you know what you can't get a better screen freeze him up beautifully but he just fails to capitalize clearly a frustrating missed opportunity there perfect screen got him the space he needed but he bricked it Vucevic and a miss there with a chance to cut the lead to single digits their game plan needs to change if they're going to get out of this hole because he is just not there offensively yeah but I mean maybe could have tried for a more memorable dunk than that one. and we know he's capable of those memorable ones hey they've got a nice comfortable lead here fellas might as well keep it simple do it a plain simple one-hander just like pound cake <laughs> I would agree <laughs> now here's Ross he's got six nine feet out and Nikola Vucevic is gonna pick up the foul the that's his first foul the defense made their presence felt but Ross is just too explosive down there Chris Paul he's checked in for James Harden Houston leading by 11 Paul kicks to Anderson stolen by Anderson got a piece of it Ross with a steal and that one clearly a foul gets the whistle and two shots coming up that one is on a reason and you watch the way the Rockets play Clark a little bit of seven seconds or less certainly from their coach Mike D'Antoni green lights to shoot from anywhere just attractive basketball a lot of fun to watch uh, Clark just how much fun is it to play in a team like that well I would think it would be the ideal way to play everybody's sharing the ball there's plenty of possessions and opportunities it's up and down trend I mean I think it's the way the game is intended to be played and there's a reason why Houston has done a great job of signing players the last few seasons and part of it is their style and the chemistry the team seems to have in playing the way they do He's perfect from the line this time. And the Magic benefiting from multiple first-round picks this summer. They needed the help. Yeah, they did. And they need a big hit in the draft. I mean, they've lacked star talent, and we know this is a talent-driven league. Either you develop stars or you pull them into your fold. Um, they've got to find some difference makers. There's no doubt about that. And I love the way he uses his size there to make sure he gets that board. Deep two from Ross. Rebounded by Capella. Capella's got four rebounds in this game. From deep. A reason or what? The Magic trail by nine. Mack with the ball. He's picked up by a reason. Here's Ross. That one doesn't drop. Good work defensively by Capella. And it's Paul penetrating. That one goes in. Paul's got seven points. And Paul has some excellent wheels, I tell you. Easily slashing to the lane whenever he's given room to operate. Now a timeout called by Orlando. In addition to going over the game plan and making whatever necessary adjustments have to be made, Greg, this timeout also the time for players to get rehydrated or hydrate for the first time with some Gatorade. Plenty of basketball still to be played here and they have to get recharged. Uh, it's a great point. Without proper hydration, a player can completely run out of gas down the stretch of a, of a game. And that's something that none of these guys can afford to have happen. If you're going to battle all the way to the finish, you have got to be hydrated. Gordon's checked in for Houston. The Magic shooting poorly, just 35% so far. Vucevic has screen on Paul. Mack, the pass to Vucevic. Inside. Oh, oh my goodness! That is breathtaking. Putting on a show. Ross can elevate with the best of them. Paul dishes to Gordon. Back to Paul. Anderson the screen. Paul kicks to Gordon. Six on the shot clock. Ariza with another miss. The Magic trail by nine to the inside. Oh, and they get in the way of the alley-oop. Not to be. Good play defensively. 20 feet out. Gets that one to drop. 
First one of the game after four straight misses. Ariza has nice form and makes these looks consistent. Mack, the pass to Fournier. Gordon dishes to Mack. Gordon a screen. And Vucevic kicks to Gordon. Tries again, and he sinks the layup. Gordon's got four points now in the quarter. Yeah, great hustle from Gordon using his patented vertical to sky up for the board. Here's Gordon. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against the Lakers. And he also looked to attack at the defensive end of the floor. Three steals in that game. Knocked loose. Oh, uh, here we go with Gordon. Nobody back. And then Gordon with the dunk. Uh, agile play to get his hand in there and get the steal. Intelligent play to immediately start the break. The Magic trail by 11. Mack with the ball. He's picked up by Paul. Gordon kicks to Vucevic. Pulls up on the elbow. The shot drops. His shooting percentage improves. He's three for seven now with that basket. And Vucevic never plays outside of himself. I mean, when he has a clean look at the rim from the mid-range, he knows he's got the green light to shoot it. Oh, man, you know he'd love to have that one over. The 11-footer. No good from Ross. Rockets leading by nine. Kicks it out to Gordon. But three. Again, the miss by Gordon. Has not made another three since the one he drilled in the first. But still, you got to defend him from beyond the arc. Mack, no luck. Houston's gotten a positive outcome on seven of their 14 three-pointers in this game. Not bad at all. Basket counts. No problem at all operating in the paint for Chris Paul. He shoots an excellent percentage even down there amongst the trees. Now a timeout called by Orlando. Well, Swiss center Clint Capella is up there as one of the most efficient players in the league. He's only 22, but he's efficient mostly because all his shots come right at the basket, right on the doorstep. Last season, he finished near the top of the league, in fact, in field goal percentage. And for a while, he was leading the league, if I recall correctly, Kevin. Capella knows who he is, what he's about, and what his team needs from him. So he finishes off his chances that are created by guards penetrating. Not flashy, but very effective. Looking at who's out there now for the Rockets. Nene, he's checked in for Capella. And Bahamute comes in for Ryan Anderson. And it's Johnson in for Trevor Ariza. You cannot let Gordon get it going from the perimeter, Kevin. I mean, he's an incredibly consistent and persistent long-range shooter. Now here is Augustine. He had 10 points in the win against Brooklyn. That's good. The Houston lead is cut down now to just 12 on the basket from Simmons. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here is eye-opening. Gordon a screen. Johnson kicks to Gordon. Nene with the screen on Simmons. Back to Johnson. Paul passes to Johnson. And a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Six points for Joe Johnson. And that jumper of Johnson is pure. I mean, doesn't pay the defense any mind, even when they're right up on him. Now here's Spates. He's coming off a 10-point game against the Nets in Brooklyn. And a look now at the breakdown between three-point and two-point shots attempted here tonight for the Magic. And they've got really good balance here. I mean, the three ball hadn't been the strongest weapon today for them, but I'd say keep the dose just about the same. Don't change the recipe. When you've got that open shot, you got to take it. That's good from Isaac. And Clark, you've been a member of this booth and many others for quite some time. I've always wondered, how did you make the jump into broadcasting? Well, you know what? I've always enjoyed the game, Kevin. Been a student of the game and have enjoyed reading and playing with words. So when my basketball playing career ended prematurely back in 1987, I got a chance to do Pacers radio and from there fell in love with this new career and wanted to excel at it. And I've been at it now for over 30 years and hope to have a few more left in front of me. Now here's Paul. Nine points in the game so far. Nene outside. 
call a screen on a follow. Gordon with no one around. And again, it's the Rockets from deep. Man, the triples keep falling, guys. That's three in a row. I think they're playing too soft on the perimeter. They can't stay so soft. They've got to get up into the shooters here. Back to Augustine. A second chance effort. Basket is good, and they'll get a chance for one more at the free throw line. And they haven't worked it inside as much as they did earlier in the game. Now that they have the lead, they don't seem as determined to pound it down low. And he's got his first chance at the line here. Performed well thus far this season with a 78% clip. And I don't think there's any question about it, guys. He's got to bring that percentage up. I mean, those are the kind of free throw numbers that will get you in a coach's doghouse and get your teammates a little mad at you. The free throw drops for Augustine. And you ask any Houston fan who the greatest player in the history of their franchise is, and they all say Akeem Olajuwon. Clark, you played against Olajuwon. Just how great a player was he? And what does he mean to this Rockets franchise today? Boy, he was special. A first ballot Hall of Famer brought the only titles in franchise history to the Rockets and could do everything you want from a big guy. Graceful, strong, a presence defensively and on the glass, unselfish. Uh, they called him Akeem the Dream for good reason. That dude was a dream to play with and a nightmare for opponents. Let's a floater go. The rebound by Johnson. Rockets leading by 16. Paul with the ball. Now guarded by Simmons. Paul can't get it to go. And close to making the defense pay for the lax coverage that time. And it's Simmons penetrating. Spates got a piece of it. And they'll keep possession. Augustine against Paul. Here's Spates. That misses off the backboard. Gets it off. No good on that last second attempt there. And so it's the Houston Rockets with a sizable lead as the quarter wraps up. They're ahead, 16 points. Their transition game has been in full effect. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Joe, you really came out on fire tonight. Did you feel like you needed to do more? I'm just trying to be more assertive, man, on both ends of the court. You know, I think everybody has to step up, so I'm just trying to do my part. You did that and more, Joe. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David, for that interview, and we'll see you back here after the break for third quarter basketball. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Ernie Johnson joined by Kenny the Jet Smith. Hey. And Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Been working out. Houston found themselves in a close game in the first. At the end of one, they were able to end up with a five-point lead. They just exploded in the second quarter, grabbing the momentum and running with it. Basket after basket, and they played stingy defense. Now they've got a halftime lead that's going to be very difficult to erase. Kenny, what do you think about the Rockets? Well, we can't look past the huge contribution their bench has provided. They've got this lead mainly because of the injection of energy and offense that they got from their reserves. That's what a coach wants to see. I'm guessing the minutes will be spread out a little bit in the second half. And Shaq, let's get your input on the Magic. Well, they gave up too many good looks. You look at the field goal percentage against them, this tells the whole story. Not enough activity defensively. Not enough disruption, Ernie. Like, Kenny disrupts me all the time. Not enough disruption. That's it for now as the second half's just about ready to go. Welcome back, everyone, to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. Terrence Ross with a strong contribution so far in this one. And through the first two periods, it seemed he got to the paint whenever he wanted to. Just a slasher's mentality. Yeah, you know, good things happen when he cuts to the rim, Greg. And you cut into the heart of the defense like that, makes things easy. 
And as we welcome you back, we begin our second half. So far, not a tightly contested game, guys, but you know, anything can happen. The Magic trail by 16. Crosses the three with Gordon at the four. Fournier out there with Sheldon Mack, and it's Vucevic in at the center, locking down the middle. That's the group starting the second half for Frank Vogel. And so here is Houston. The Magic getting the bucket. Now here's Paul. There's the dish to Capella. Pass to Harden. There's the triple. Score the basket. It's number six for him this game. Six for nine. 67% shooting. So pretty to watch when Harden gets room to shoot from three. I mean, his release, picture perfect. I think it's going in every time. Mag dishes to Vucevic. And slam dunk by Vucevic. And way to finish and cut into that lead a little bit. Yeah, but look at the, ba the basket, guys. Still shaking. Well, I tell you what, he loaded up as much power as he could behind that two-hander. Now, here's Ariza. Paul kicks to Harden. Vucevic with the block. And you know, with Vucevic, as is the case with all shot blockers, it's about timing. And how can you bait that shooter into shooting a shot that you know you can block? Rockets leading by 15. Paul passes to Harden. 90 seconds now into the second half. Tries from 10. He can't hit that time. Gordon with the defensive effort. Ross on the wing. Ariza covering. Ross dishes to Mack. Passes it to Vucevic. Gordon with the screen for Vucevic. Mack, no luck. Rockets have gone one of three since starting the second half. And it's Paul penetrating. Kicks it out to Harden. Here's Capella. Shoots over Vucevic. Capella, the pass to Paul. Another miss by Houston. One for five on offense. A slow start here in the second half. Ross for three. Gordon, it's good on the putback. And the defense just allowing Gordon to get loose underneath the hoop. I mean, I don't know how you lose track of a guy like that. Paul kicks to Harden. Just over two and a half minutes gone by here in the second half. Vucevic with the block. Ross against a reason. Ross, that's good. And that's a case where the deceptive strength that Ross has helps him score over the defense. You can't afford to take this guy lightly. Now here's Paul. Nine points in the game so far. It's stolen by Vucevic. And now the fast break. Ross with the ball. Matt, no luck. Oh, great effort there. That's how you defend the paint. Exactly. Can't play it any better than that, Greg. Capella, good. It's Harden with the assist that time. And the Rockets lead by 13. You know, one of the great strengths of Coach D'Antoni, to me, Kevin, is he really gives his players a lot of confidence. And his philosophy really clicks with players. They're comfortable playing for him. They know their responsibilities, and they play hard for D'Antoni. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. And to what you said about Mike D'Antoni, he sees his players and asks, what can they do instead of what can't you do? And, you know, he's had a lot of success last season elevating the Rockets and winning Coach of the Year in the process. And the Rockets making a change here. Green's checked in. Third quarter of basketball here in just a little under three and a half minutes gone by. Mack dishes to Fournier. It's Vucevic, top of the key. Six for ten with that shot going in. That's a good game for a lot of guys. You know, even though he's been on, they still are behind. I mean, there's only so much he can do. Harden with it. He's got 14. Over in the corner, Green tries a three. Houston gets it back, kicks it to Anderson. Ariza outside. Over Ross. And the shot falls short this time. The Magic trail by 11. He dishes it to Mack. Back to Ross. 
Vucevic a screen on Ariza. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Gordon. A moment now to see the numbers for Ariza. He's right around 13 points a night, five rebounds, and four assists. And, and some pretty good numbers, guys. He's certainly making a contribution. Better than expected. He still has a ways to go, but I like what I'm seeing right now. Outside, Green. Screen by Capella. Green kicks to Harden. Three-pointer. Traps in the tray. Ariza's got his second bucket of the night. Got to respect the long-range shooting of Ariza now. A capable shooter from downtown. Watch out. Gordon with the screen for Vucevic. Now here's Matt, guarded by Harden. Gordon with a screen on Ariza. Five to shoot. Ross, unable to get that one. Good work defensively by Capella. Houston leading by 14. Here's Anderson. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got three assists now in this one. He is in the zone. There's a reason he keeps getting the ball. They're feeding him because they trust him to lead their team. Now here's Gordon. Eight points for him. Here's Vucevic. Somehow ignores the tight D and gets the way up. Vucevic has got 14. Impeccable mechanics this quarter. He's been perfect from the field. Outside, Green. Anderson, a screen on Vucevic. Green, the pass to Harden. Over Ross. They get it back to the wing right side. Harden outside. Over Mack. Harden, that's good. 16 points for him. And the degree of difficulty, Harden showing great poise. Doesn't get thrown off by the aggressive defense at all. Gordon kicks to Mack. Gordon a screen. Vucevic dishes to Mack. Fournier against Green. Puts it up from 12. Fournier's shot is off. Houston leading by 16. Anderson passes to Green. Harden kicks to Anderson. And Houston again with the bucket. Uh, assists like that have typified their effort today. Terrific ball movement. Really a prime example of the difference in how these teams have operated offensively. Much more individual play at the other end. Now here's Ross. He's got 14, and the basket is good. You've got to make Ross a passer in that pick and roll. I mean, he's a better scorer than he is a playmaker. And now the first timeout called here for the Rockets. Clark, when you look back at your terrific career, who is the one player that you considered your toughest opponent to go up against? There were a couple of guys. Um, Bernard King from the New York Knicks because we saw them a handful of times a year, and he was just such a phenomenal scorer and a relentless worker offensively. He just never gave you a break. Um, I didn't get to see the West Coast teams but twice a year. The Denver Nuggets in the early 80s had Kiki Vandaway, Alex English, and Dan Issel. And between those three guys, they were averaging about 80, 81 points a game. And I usually dealt with English or Vandaway. And those were long nights because those guys moved the ball, shot it from everywhere, and were excellent offensive players. And Jonathan Isaac, a 6'11 small forward out of Florida State. You know, we're seeing more and more players like this with the length of a center and the guard skills. You know, you think of KD, of Brandon Ingram, and, and now Isaac. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. The first one falls. And the story for Jonathan Isaac, as a sophomore in high school, Greg, he stood six foot three and played guard. He hit a growth spurt, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, and it makes a difference. I think what I notice most is that he's retained not just the perimeter skill, but also the fluidity. I mean, he's light on his feet and really moves well. Remember, there was another guy that was a point guard and had a, a nice growth spurt. I think his name was Anthony Davis. 
Well, you look at Isaac, and all you think he needs to do is add some weight. And he's got terrific skills and a promising future. Johnson goes in, kicks it out to Gordon. On the wing, Green. Another miss by Houston. The Magic trail by 15. Here's a follow. Got a hand on it. Johnson dishes to Nene. Back to Johnson. Over Simmons. And there's Johnson. That's good on the assist by Nene. And that's now eight points for Joe Johnson. And we'll get a look at how the hustle stat game has been going for Houston. Their defense has been outstanding. Closing out on shots and blocking a few as well. They haven't wasted time getting the ball up the court tonight either, and it's resulted in a lot of fast break points. Green passes to Nene. Shoots a three. Rebound by the Magic. Augustine's got his third rebound on the night. And I tell you what, he's doing his best to contribute, but he's been out of sync, out of rhythm. Luckily, his team still is in front. Pass to Isaac over Mbamuta. Count that one from Isaac. Isaac's got five points so far. And Isaac takes no time getting his shot off. He's got a lethal quick release. Now Johnson. Eight points for him. Nene at the elbow. Here's Green. And Green slams it in. Straight power homie I mean he ripped it down <laughs> with both hands absolutely a resounding dunk yeah for sure that was a take no chances take no prisoner slam right there guys here's Augustine the Rockets making the shot feeds it to space and good coming in on the assist by DJ Augustine Augustine's got his third assist on the night now here's Gordon 11 points in the game the feed to Emba Amute. Gordon kicks to Johnson. Houston moving it around. Here's Nene. Speaks with the block. Simmons left side. He kicks it to Augustine. He feeds it to Spates. And again, it's Orlando converting. Great pass that time by D.J. Augustine. Rockets leading by 12. Johnson dishes to Gordon. And there's the pass to Mbamuta. Nene against Spates. From the baseline. The shot by Nene. No good. Orlando's gone one of four and three-point shots here in the third. Johnson against Simmons. Rockets with the rebound. And uh, 101 left in the third quarter. Gordon the pass to Green. Kicks it out to Gordon. From the arc. It's hauled in by the Magic. Spades has got six rebounds in the game. And it's a follow, penetrating, and plenty of contact on the shot. So, two free throws coming up. And there's the foul against Houston. And this is his second trip to the line in the game. Got to admire what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 90%? You know, there's been some improvement in his free throw shooting this year. His percentage has taken a little jump compared to last season. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Roof shot. Free throw drops for a follow. Chris Paul, he's checked in for Gerald Green. He hits both from the strike. 41 seconds left in the third. And here's Gordon, 11 points in the game. Gordon, a screen. And the layup's good off the glass. Gordon's got 13. 
And Gordon doing a nice job measuring these inside shots well. I mean, has a solid, quick release pretty much from anywhere on the floor. Now here's a follow. Seven points in the game. He's made all three of his free throws so far. Two shots. The free throw drops for a follow. And so he makes both from the line. You don't have to be in a hurry. They can hold for the last one. Um, that's exactly what they should do. I mean, you don't want to give the opponent another possession here. Make sure you get the last one. Dishes to Augustine. One second left. And off the front iron. And in it goes. He has seven. And so it's the Houston Rockets. Holding on to an eight-point lead heading into the break. Their shooting has been the big key. Their percentage from the field so far has been terrific. And we've got more NBA action on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. Now let's listen in to Frank Vogel's huddle. Shrink the floor. When you're on the ball or close it out, close out faster. Okay, take away their airspace and then contain their drive. And that's the catch-22 there. Frank Vogel wanting better perimeter defense, but also wanting to limit forays to the hoop. Yeah, and it takes tremendous discipline to do that. Don't leave your feet, don't reach, and everyone help each other defensively. Three quarters in the books, folks. Glad to have you with us. Welcome back as we get going. So on the floor for Houston. Chris Paul and Gordon are the backcourt pair. Nene is out there with Luke and Bahamutu. And it's Johnson in at the three, the small forward. It's almost like he's trying to make things hard on himself. You know, he's just got to slow the game down, try to get some easy ones. Nene, the screen. Gordon kicks to Nene. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. First free throw is good. And Clark, you were around Coach Frank Vogel quite a bit during his run as head coach of the Pacers. Well, when you look back at it, what stands out? His preparation. He's an eager learner. He's meticulous in his detail. He's even killed and extremely positive. I think he's an outstanding young coach. And good to see him having a team that he can have an opportunity to build and shape into a playoff contender at some point. Got it, and the Houston lead has been cut down now to just eight points with the basket from Spates. Boy, he hit his teammate in the perfect spot. Led him easily to the bucket. That's what you call a room service assist. Paul kicks to Mbaamute on the wing Johnson. He wants to get it to Nene and does. Five on the clock. No good that time. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I, I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. Now Johnson, after Aaron Afalo missing that last three-pointer, Paul dishes to Johnson. The 19-foot shot, and Johnson missing again. And he rushed that one, no doubt about it. The D. Allen's position, you could see the frustration on his face. And Augustine kicks to Spates. And it's tonight. And it's out of bounds to the Magic as Orlando will retain possession. So for the Magic, Evan Fournier comes in for Aaron Aflalo. And Shelvin Max subbed in for Augustine. The Rockets also changing it up. Anderson comes in for Mbaamute. 
and Trevor Ariza has subbed in for Joe Johnson. Three from the inbound. Mack, good. A pretty free look from three-point range. The D forgot about him on that possession. You know, Greg, I think that might have been intentional. It perhaps was not an accident because he's typically not the guy that's taking that shot at this stage of the game. And Paul gets it to go in. And that set them apart today, guys. Their success with the mid-range. Simply taking advantage of what the defense has given them, and they've really made the most of it. Now, here's Fournier. Spates sets a screen. The dish to Mack. Right at the free throw line. That one's not going to go. Good work defensively by Paul. Simmons against Ariza. The kick out to Anderson. Fader on the way. It's hauled in by the Magic. One made three form for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. Isaac misses. And, you know, that's an easy one. You can't miss these shots. Those are makeable shots, especially when the defense isn't on its game. And I bet you'll never see too many guys who can put forth an effort on the boards like this one. Yeah, as a former outstanding rebounder myself, I can certainly appreciate what this guy is doing. An extraordinary combination of talent and desire is what allows him to do what he's done today. Great performance. And Evan Fournier out of France. His father was a judo champion. And, you know, Fournier is conscious of European players' reputation for being more finesse, soft, if you will. And I think he's done a nice job being aggressive and getting himself to the free throw line by playing a more physical game. I think at 6'7", he wants to dispel that reputation as being a finesse guy. So, for the Magic, Vucevic checked in for Spates. Aaron Gordon comes in for Isaac, and it's Ross in for Jonathan Simmons. The Rockets also changing it up. Clint Capella comes in for Nene, and it's James Harden in for Gordon. That one is no good. And Evan Fournier out of France, an instinctive offensive player, Greg. Yeah, favorite player growing up was, was Manu Ginobili, and you can see some similarities in their games. Uh, Fournier possesses long-range shooting, but also able to handle and put pressure on the D with the dribble. Mack with the ball, and it's Harden picking him up. And Mack kicks to Vucevic. The shot, no good. The Rockets go the other way with it. Paul passes to Capella. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up, and two shots coming up. Oh, I tell you what, it's really impressive how Capella has improved his role so quickly, Kevin. I mean, he's a starting caliber center known for his defense, but continues to make strides on offense, too. And he makes the first. And league expansion is something that simply won't leave the conversation in the NBA right now, Clark. Do you think that uh, the NBA adding another team or two is inevitable? I don't think it's inevitable. As a matter of fact, I think we're at a good number um, where we are, Kevin. It's still the best league in the world, and I think you could dilute that a bit if you added teams. So I'm fine with where we are. The Magic trail by nine. Fournier in the corner. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. And quite honestly, Fournier just has a, a good basketball IQ, a high basketball IQ, knowing even before he gets the pass that he's got time and space to shoot. Now, here's Capella. Paul outside. Pass to Harden. It's Ariza on the wing. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got five assists in the game. And Ariza has great confidence in his shot. A dynamite catch-and-shoot player. Gordon, a screen. There's a good screen. Mack dishes to Vucevic. Back to Mack. The putback. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second-chance points. There you go. Relentless pursuit of the ball. I love it. He never stopped working. 
Here's the lob to Harden. Throws down the alley-oop slam. Boy, the floor awareness of Chris Paul. Got to respect that. I mean, whenever one of his guys is open, he's getting the ball to him quickly and on time. It was beautiful the first time, but Under Armour showing us the replay of that tremendous alley-oop again. Another unleash chaos moment. And really, the defense didn't do a lot to fight around that screen on that possession. Left side, Ariza takes a three. That doesn't go either for Ariza. Not his best game, but they're still getting it done collectively. They grab their own miss. Tremendous effort. I mean, this guy has already cracked double digits on the backboard. And those rebounds lead the team. I mean, he's been the tone setter for him today in terms of work ethic and uh, glass eating. And he didn't punish them for the weak coverage there, but they can't count on him to continue missing. Fournier against Harden. And Fournier kicks to Vucevic up again. And the second chance effort by Gordon. And now it's just a four-point rocket lead. And you can see the second chance points now starting to be a major factor. Well, I tell you what, offensive rebounding is really an important statistic. Maybe undervalued a bit, but those extra possessions really do help. Another miss by Houston. Oh, I'm surprised he couldn't put that away. I mean, the defense clearly botched an assignment leaving him open. Here's Vucevic. Hits some rim on the way in, and the bucket's good. And you're starting to see some tired legs on those defenders as we come down the stretch here. Bro. Yeah, I agree with you, Greg. I mean, fatigue really a factor. You can see the heavy legs, and that's why he was wide open on that shot. The defender just couldn't get to him. Ariza outside. And then jam down as he goes right over Nikola Vucevic. Ariza's not only a shooter. I mean, he's excellent at slashing to the rack as well because he's got a nice change of pace and good speed. And Matt kicks to Fournier. Pass to Matt. Paul with the steal. Oh, and here comes Anderson all alone. And Anderson slams it in. A delicious dime from Chris Paul there. The Magic trail by six. Bob pass to Gordon. Rebounded by Capella. Capella's got rebound number 12 now. Tenacity on the glass. Let's it go from deep. And Chris Paul the bucket on the assist from Harden. 14 points for Chris Paul. First three of the half. Second of the game. Can he heat up? Gordon for three. Here's Vucevic. And you know that's going to be goaltending, guys. So that's a free basket right there. Yeah, that's a tough call for the refs to make there. I I'm not sure it was on the way down, but that's, that's how they saw it. Houston leading by seven. Here is Harden. Kicks it to Capella. Harden with a screen on Vucevic. And here's Anderson from the arc. And again, it's the Rockets from deep. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. Fournier with the ball. And it's Harden picking him up. Gordon a screen. Ross against Ariza. Ross passes to Vucevic. Six on the shot clock. Shoots over Capella. Rebounded by Capella. Capella's got 13 rebounds in the game. Class eating. And another three for Houston. All these open threes they're giving up have really been the driving force on this run. Picked by Vucevic. And there's the foul. It goes on Ryan Anderson. That's his first foul. the screen man I like the length of Anderson does a really good job sticking with whoever he's on oh great timing he is one tough customer on that offensive glass you know, it's like he has a sixth sense of where that rebound is going 
And that sixth sense, guys, might be better than just about anybody else's. Here's Capella following the score by Aaron Gordon. Capella dishes to Harden. They get a hand on it. Ross with the steal. And now Orlando on the break. Ross is running. To the left wing. Knocks it loose. And it goes out of bounds. Uh, last touch by Paul. Time call time out, here. Time the out. Magic decide to talk it over. And Kevin, he saw his, his guys just a little sluggish out there. Oftentimes, a timeout like this allows you to kind of just reset. And now the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Chris Paul. And, and to me, the best part of his game has been the work he's done inside. I mean, slashing, driving the lane, attacking the basket at every chance. When he's had an opening, he's taken it. Coming into this game, he'd been having a tough stretch. We all know that, but not anymore. He's back at his best, and I think it's safe to say that slump is over. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, guys, during that last timeout, I listened to Frank Vogel talk to his team, and he was emphatic. He said, we are not going to win this game playing this way, fellas. You've got to step it up. You've got to get aggressive, and you've got to battle to get back in this thing. Let's see if that pep talk got him going, guys. Here is Paul after the made shot from Nikola Vucevic. Paul kicks to Harden. No good on the three. The Magic trail by nine. Here's Fournier. Nice spin off the left rim and in. Fournier's got six here in this quarter. Well, you can consider it automatic when Fournier gets some space to shoot from there. Now here's Paul. He's covered by Matt. Paul passes to Anderson. The Paul screen by Capella from deep Harden. Another miss by Harden. Orlando's gone beyond the arc seven times here in the fourth and been successful three times. Count it good. Now just a five point rocket lead. And really come on now that kind of drive is what you love about Fournier. No fear at all in terms of taking matters into his own hands. Now here's Anderson. Ariza outside over Ross. And good as it just snugs right down through the net. We've got 113 left in the fourth quarter. Picked by Vucevic. Knocks it loose and taken away by Paul. Plays it in off the breakaway. And now it's a nine-point rocket lead. On the break is where Chris Paul at his best. I mean, he loves taking advantage of space in the open court and beating everybody down the floor. Here's Harden and the jam by Harden. Guys, I think this is a game they have to feel good about as we wind through the final moments here in what looks to be a solid win for the Rockets. The differential in assists led to a lot of open looks, and it also helped to get um, you know more guys involved in the offense easily. And they made the defense adjust, but they just couldn't come up with an answer. And you can mark this one down in the W column. It'll mark their 23rd of the season. And so they win their first game against this squad. It's a two-game season series, and they'll be going for the sweep the next time they face off. Yeah, and Greg, when it is just a two-game season series, the team winning game one has that slight mental edge going into the second meeting, knowing they've already solved their opponent one time and only have to do it one more time. And while there was some nice performances tonight, it definitely ended up being a solid outing for Chris Paul. You can do a lot to change a game other than scoring, and it was his quick hands on the defensive end that put them in the driver's seat. So we see the Rockets taking the win here. They came in here and took care of business like they were the home team. And, and Kevin, how about the mental toughness that this group showed? They, they were never yes. rattled at all by the opposing fans. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Chris, big win tonight. What do you think was the biggest factor? I mean, I don't know. You know, it was just our defense. You know, obviously our offense fed off of it. Guys made open shots, but I think we really locked down defensively, and that's what we're trying to make sure is that we're a defensive team every night. Well, you were a defensive team tonight, Chris. Thanks for your time. Kevin? All right, David. Great job. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, 
This is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. And we'll see you next time.